was invited to another school of uh, spiritual, you know, and uh, another Vietnamese uh, master, you know. He, he's uh, famous and teach also somehow, look like Quan Yin, but a little different. Mm. And uh, they make me talk to him, you know. And uh, no, not talk, talk already, fine. In fact, he's uh, the one that do all the talking. I have hardly any chance anyway. All right. And then later we eat together. And he do the talking, and I also listen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was eating the those uh, noodles, you know. <laughs> he got <laughs> and then he <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and I put the video all the whole time. They don't give me a break. And right to me, not just to both of us in the middle. No, no. And I put right like this. So the guy eat what he want, say what he want, no problem. And I was hungry like hell. <laughs> Because it was a winter day, and um, we went to his uh, one of his uh, disciple a retreat or something. You know, it's right in the mountain, California, but on the mountain, it's snow so thick, and you have to put the chain, you know, in your wheels in order to climb up. Can you imagine? And it snowed so much, and I hadn't eaten anything all day until then, and listened to all his talk and smiling all the time, <laughs> you know, and let his disciple and my disciple eat me already all the time. They eat me all up already. <laughs> I need a little recharge. <laughs> and they cook beautiful food. My God, that's very cruelty. <laughs> that's the most cruelty of all. <laughs> Make me wait all the time, listen to all this, and look at people and let them eat me, and then cook beautiful food. And it's so cold outside, it's snowing. And he talked, talk. <laughs> I have to not, I have to look, I can't eat it, and eat it, some noodle coming out of the corner of my mouth, <laughs> like a bear, like a mustache, you know. Oh, dear God, I hope they edited that for me, because it's not my camera. I don't even allow my cameraman come in, and they put the camera already there, the videotape already there, and they sit me right in front of it, and he sit all, you know, Outside of camera, he does what he wants. <laughs> and me, I got stuck. And I was so hungry, and the food tastes so good. I couldn't eat very well, you know? My God, I'm too shy. <laughs> so imagine if I let you do this as a sacrifice, huh? Just because of, for the love of the disciples, you know? I have to do many things that I don't like to do. Nobody like it. Even you are not master or anything. Would you like to sit in front of a camera while you're eating? <laughs> Especially when you wear, you know, just cut clothes, you know, look. You see? <laughs> yeah. Huh? How glamorous, huh? And your hair are not colored and half black, half white. Yeah? Oh, yeah. My God, I'm telling you. What I mean is when I do something interesting, no? Yeah. I was uh, very naughty one time, you know. We went to Hong Kong, a lecture, you know. And afterward, they took me to a restaurant, uh, uh, an Indian restaurant. I think I told you guys already, but I'm not sure if you remember. And, uh, you know, that Indian restaurant is a true Indian restaurant. I mean, hard, 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 hard. You eat and you cry. <laughs> You don't eat, you die. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. If I suffer, everybody else should. Why not? <laughs> so I brought a lot home, yeah, for the staff and for the people who always hang around me and don't want to leave me alone. <laughs> you understand? Always a master this, one this, one that, you know. Sit in my bedroom, sit in my toilet, sit everywhere. You know what I mean, huh? Okay. So I brought a lot home. And uh, I tell them all to line up. And I tell everybody, you know, the sticky ones, line up. Oh, they look. I say, I'm going to give you some food. So line up so I will drop it in your mouth. And after, <laughs> after I drop it in your mouth, you quietly go outside and chew. Don't say nothing. <laughs> don't say nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't chew it right here. Just leave it there. Go outside of the door and chew it. Okay, everybody go out. And outside they choose, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> but nobody inside knows, so continue, you know, bless food, you know.
<laughs> what a pity not to take some. <laughs> Tell you what, it was so hot. It was just fun, you know, and, but they liked it. <laughs> don't care. Some people don't mind, just they don't expect, you know. <laughs> yeah, who told them always want to hang around, yeah? <laughs> they want master food, yeah? Master drink, whatever master eat, whatever master drink, I want it. Okay, there you are. <laughs> You cannot complain that I don't give you, right? Yeah, whatever master eat, I want it. Whatever master drink, I want it. And whatever master wear, I want it. Yeah. Just like the dress I wear, you know, in Hungary, everybody wants it. Can you believe it? It's such a silly. Even men. Even men wear it and wear exactly the same. Yeah, because the dress I normally I, wear, I make it like this so easy for me to work. You know, I don't want long sleeve. It was summer and Florida is never cold, mm -hmm. so it's just a t-shirt actually, a long t-shirt made homemade. And when I uh, travel to Hungary, I didn't have time to pack, and I don't ever have any other thing anyway. You know, so I took whatever I wear in the cave, <laughs> bring it out, easy. You know, <laughs> just seven colors, seven days. <laughs> okay, fine. And over there it's so cold, so I don't have anything else to wear. So my underwear come out from here. I wear the underwear, you know, the long john underneath and the the long sleeve of the underwear come out, you know, inside. <laughs> and so they want to wear exactly the same like that. My God, what a silly thing to do! In Thailand, the bay is hot like hell. <laughs> I want to wear exactly like master. First, uh, I thought. Ask me, everybody wants master clothes from Hungary. I say, why? What for? It's a cave clothes. <laughs> it's nothing <laughs> special. No, they all want it. I say, no, don't be ridiculous. There's so many beautiful things I design. Just, just get what they want. Or oh, go out, I buy any beautiful thing. Why do they want to wear such a caveman <laughs> stuff? It's simple and simple, you know, and, and easy for me. Just like a long T-shirt. No, we want it. I say, no. And then later they bug me so much inside that I have to call them again. I think, I don't know, many months later, I can't bear it no more. I say, okay, okay, <laughs> up for grab, <laughs> whatever, just do it. I give it to them, sell it to them, and everybody wears it. You can see it from some form of the competition song they wear it. Just look, I don't know where they're going with that. <laughs> Jesus, and even wear exactly the same with the underwear sticking out. <laughs> they don't understand anything. It was just emergency. It's just my, I don't care, you know? I don't have clothes, so I wear the underwear to keep me warm. And then this thing just to cover me so I look decent in front of the camera. <laughs> It's not a style, it's not a special mode, it's not, it doesn't have no spiritual significance, not for whatsoever. But we want it, we want it, okay. So we gotta have it. Everybody buy it like, like, like hot cake, you know. Seven color as well. Yeah. And underwear to match. <laughs> and a white underwear even. My God. My God. They're so cute. <laughs> And some even paint like master as well. I want people to grow, you know, to be their self, themselves, to improve what they, the best they have, not to copy. You don't go nowhere with that. I hope they just copy my clothes and not anything else. Well, the spiritual thing, I hope they copy. <laughs> not just how I walk and how I talk and how I paint and how I wear my clothes. Jesus Christ, nobody would even want this kind of clothes. It's just a casual, simple meditation. In the cave it's easy, you know? Mm -hmm. At home, run around. And because if I travel, I'm alone, you know? Mostly I don't, I'm alone. I don't take anybody. Not always, not always possible to take people, yeah? Mm. Not always available people to go when I want to go, yeah? Mm -hmm. Most of them just stay home, make money, you know? Nobody wants to take care of me. <laughs> and if they come, they, they want me to take care of them, if they come around here. Yeah. You know, so always expecting something, like a retreat, you know, cakes, candy, bedtime story. 
blessing on the head. Pet, pet. Yeah, pet, pet. <laughs> like the, the birds and the dogs. Pet, pet. <laughs> Just like the dogs or the birds. Come here, pet, pet. Yeah, pet, pet. <laughs> pet everywhere. And they go to sleep. So they have no idea. I have to work, you know, more than everybody else in, in the universe. <laughs> well, more than anybody I knew, at least, yeah? I work day and night sometimes. And there are days when the karma beat me up, you know, and they expect me every day is like retreat, you know. Oh, smiling master, cakes, candy, bedtime story, and pet pet. <laughs> pet pet. <laughs> pet pet, master, touch me and pet me here, touch me there. Please bless my water. <laughs> Bless my hair, so I grow more. <laughs> oh my God! So even if they come nearby, they get disappointed, you know. But I imagine all kind of thing. Huh? Wow. Like I just uh, walk around the mountain all day with the beats in my hand. Namo Amitabha, you know. Yeah, <laughs> the holy master. <laughs> Yeah, very holy. My clothes are all holy. Yeah, have holes in my clothes. And we even want that. They don't understand it. Because when I travel alone, I cannot take so many things. I have to travel light, you know, one packet. So I come in and put it in there and then go out and take it. So I don't have to go down and wait. Because sometimes they lost your luggage, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't have that many clothes. What would I wear? <laughs> if I wear nothing, it would be worse. Everybody will imitate. <laughs> and then what do you think the world will think of us, huh? Huh? What do you think? How we live? How I live? Yeah, the, the reason I wear this, I pack this, because it's so easy, you know, just one. And I pack uh, maybe two, two uh, pair of underwear. To, to normally I use it to sleep when it's too cold. But in Hungary, I have only one pair, so I cannot even afford it. At night, I don't wear anything. I just sleep, uh, you know, with the, with the blanket. I save it, so we don't. We got in Hungary. It was there's nothing at all there, not even a washing machine. There's one broken somewhere in the office. <laughs> and I have to use a hand to wire it or something. I see it. My God, oh, this small. It's like a like a sink or something. And they call that. <laughs> A washing machine. I say, where is the machine? <laughs> I don't see any machine in there. It's so small, the machine must be like computer chip or something. <laughs> so, so, so I think they they can't do anything much, you know. I like broken or something. It's so small anyway. <laughs> yeah, it shakes. It shakes the whole earth. Huh? Okay, I, I saw that. You know it, huh? So I think somebody has to wash by hand. Or even with the machine, it's in the office, and the office is as small as a palm already. And there are hundreds of people come in and out, in and out for toilet, for information, for whatever, number of the, huh? So I consider that. So I save my clothes, you know? I just save it for the glorious occasion that I have to wear the underwear to go out because it's so cold. <laughs> in, in my trailer, I just wrap up, you know? That's why sometimes you guys come in my trailer, bring food to see my shoulder all over, <laughs> because, <laughs> because I'm showing <laughs> my shoulders. <laughs> if I want to take something, I have to put a blanket underneath <laughs> so I can take it. So the shoulder all come out, you know. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, if I'm 20, probably it will look good, but I'm 50 and it <laughs> no need to show shoulder anymore. <laughs> but I have to, because <laughs> I have only one trailer, you know, and not many clothes. I pack only seven. It's easy in, into one, you know. Yeah. Because if you pack ordinary trousers like you or the jeans, so thick, yeah. and then and, and a T-shirt inside and then another shirt, then I don't have room. Yeah. This is convenient for me, you know, because of my lifestyle. I have to travel a lot and sometimes suddenly, you know. So they don't understand all this, you know. <laughs> I want to wear the same because it look like if you wear that, you become enlightened God or something. <laughs> but luckily, nobody see me without clothes in my trailer, you know. Otherwise, they they probably do the same, walk around <laughs> with their blanket <laughs> or the sleeping bag. I had a sleeping bag, I think. 
they buy me a sleeping bag, a small one, mm-hmm. or maybe a blanket. I come. I, I bought myself a blanket the first day I came. I remember. I don't even have sleeping bag because it's too heavy to carry all that. So the first day I came, I bought a lot of food for them, and then I, I grab a blanket and come home. And because I don't see, I don't understand Hungarian, so I bought a, a cover for the blanket, but it's so short. It's a cover only two thirds of the blanket. <laughs> Remember, and then I also don't know the sheet. You know, the sheet only only cover only two thirds of the bed too, so they match very well. <laughs> I can't imagine. I buy such a matching stuff just blindly, and it match. You know, I didn't even look at anything. <laughs> So I said to some of the people who who take my clothes out to wash one day, they want to wash my 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 sheet. I said, "Be careful! Don't make it shrink anymore. <laughs> if it shrink anymore, <laughs> I will sleep outside of the blanket." <laughs> and I will have to cover the bed myself <laughs> with my body. <laughs> Remember, the, the sheet was so short. And the blanket so short, all thing come out at the end. <laughs> so, well, I'm clever. I'm clever. At least you know what I did. I, I, you know, the 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 cover part I use it for my head, and the uncover part I choose the feet. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the feet don't see. No eyes. No eyes on the feet. <laughs> don't see what happened. <laughs> so my feet was very contented. That, they are covered. They don't care. They don't understand the color or the shortness of anything. So it was okay. <laughs> and later come the three dogs inside. No. Oh, they see everything. <laughs> so I have to hide it a little bit. I feel a little embarrassed, you know. <laughs> How come you are the supreme master and you don't even know what kind of blanket inside the bag? <laughs> you should have enough psychic power to know. <laughs> That this is a size that you want. You just take it and take it and go. You don't even look. Actually, it's a tex- Tesco, you know, and they don't sell that many blanket or many sheet either. You're lucky to get some already, you know. And it's in Hungary, you know. They just recover from communism. <laughs> That's already very luxury that you buy some something in stock, nah? Okay, because the communists they don't care about luxury, you know. So it's good that you have two thirds of the blanket cover. Who cares? You know, the one third you don't need. <laughs> Luckily, I am short. You know, if I'm a little bit longer, <laughs> probably my feet won't complain and want to go where my head is. <laughs> anyway, and later, you know, all the dogs come in also, and the uh, the trailer was a little warmer. Because at that time, the electricity also in Hungary, small farm, also not reliable, and everybody use it for different, all kind of thing. And my electricity heater come on, off, on, off, all night long. I don't know when I'm cold, when I'm warm. I just wait for the the, the lotto, the lucky turn, you know. Okay, now I'm warm. Oh, now I'm cold. Now cold. Now warm. <laughs> That's keep me awake. It's nice too, you know. <laughs> and later, because the, the dog was so cold outside, so I brought him in also, and that also helped to heat up the trailer. <laughs> Very economical. <laughs> they go both both way, you know. The, the dogs are happy to be inside, and I'm happy to have a few degrees warmer. <laughs> yeah, why didn't I think about that <laughs> earlier? You know, in the beginning <laughs> of my trailer. Yeah, you just think the master knows everything. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> Yeah, because before I asked them whether the dogs would get too cold or not, they said, no, they get used to it already. I guess they are. But they were so happy to be inside, uh, evidently. Uh, Boyo never want to go out again. <laughs> he he hold it, hold it until he couldn't hold no more. And he tried to find a corner somewhere to be in the house. He don't want to go out <laughs> because he's so, he's so loved to go in that he don't want to go out anymore. Now that Boyo is here and a nice guy. Yeah, he loved to go inside. Now he don't he don't want to go. Huh? Now he already more used to. But in the beginning, eh, very difficult to get him out. He don't want to go out. And once he go out, he quickly leave his leg and run back inside. <laughs> oh, poor guy. He's really a good boy. So gentle. <laughs> and they love the toast I give every night. You know. Every night I come back from uh, group meditation about midnight, one o'clock, you know. So at that time it starts to be colder than normal. So I asked uh, some uh, big guy to bring the dogs in. 
and then we toast the toast the, the bread, you know, the Hungarian bread so big and you cut it thick like this, you know, and then you toast it and it crusty both sides and inside soft, you know, and you put big butter on it. Wow. Everybody eat it, eat. They never stop. And then later I said, Okay, okay, stop, give me a break. I, I need one piece, okay. <laughs> Okay, so we were very happy, you know, together, you know. I have toast every night. Yeah, it's so simple, but they probably never had it before, no? No. Never had such a warm toast and butter melting in their mouth like that. They eat, 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 oh. And then every day they, after that, after a while, they come in and look at the toaster. The first thing, <laughs> don't need my dashan or anything. Just look at the toaster. <laughs> One blessing from the toaster. <laughs> I think that that's why your your dog, you know, the Hungarian dog, loves me so much. <laughs> because it was such a cold night, you know, twenty five degree minus, huh? And somebody bring you in her own house, yeah, and toasted and buttered for you and. Put it in your mouth by her hand, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, put a hand, three pieces, and they all of them eat one, two, three. <laughs> and they, they, even then, they, they wait for each other. They don't try to snatch or fight nothing. But later, uh, but sometimes, you know, they get jealous with each other. You know, mm -hmm. too much homo. Mm -hmm. Now they're okay with each other. Huh? Yeah. Yes. More quiet. Both of them. Both of the male yes. before that were yes. fighting all the time. Yes. Yeah. You remember, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But in my trailer, they don't fight too much. It's just boyo, say, keep it, keep distance. <laughs> this is mine. He go into his corner next to my bed, and he growl at the other guy, don't come near, man, don't come near, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Behave. <laughs> and so ladies sleep in the other corner. He has his favorite corner, and every day he want to go there. Something in between two, two things, you know? Between two things. He like the bed and something else, uh, behind, so he can lie in, in the middle. He feels safe like that. So every day he go there, and if the other guy come near, then he don't like it. That's all. Huh? But they they don't they don't make too much trouble. Just growling. And later on they get used to it, and each one go to the corner. <laughs> no problem. I was glad to have the trailer. Otherwise, where do I go? Yeah, with my non 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 fashion clothes, <laughs> non clothes. <laughs> An unclosed fashion, eh? It's so cold, and your machine is not functioning well. Why, why do we hang it even? It don't even ring. Mm. That's why we have to economize, you know. <laughs> Where only when you go out, you know, <laughs> inside the trailer, no. <laughs> Wrap a sheet or a blanket. Yeah. Yeah, in any situation you can live, you know, huh? And can you imagine such an economic situation, difficulty like that, and it become a fashion? <laughs> I was so surprised. What? Anything else but those? These are almost like rack, you know. <laughs> well, they're like the people who don't have clothes. <laughs> Just, you know, like throw it on to look decent. <laughs> But in the photo, it doesn't show, you know, even look at this, you know, it's all hairy, you know. But in the photo, it will look very beautiful. Yes. We don't show the hair of the old, you know, <laughs> and it doesn't show the the, the sweat that come out from under there or anywhere. <laughs> Just imagine, love makes blind, huh? <laughs> they think I wear it because it's something special or glamorous. No, it's just convenient, <laughs> yeah? Because I can't take any more of the clothes. Yeah, this is good. You know, so you don't need a trousers and a shirt and another thing together. This is special, you know. I don't know how you call it in Hungarian or English. I don't think we have it in England either. It's a shop, eh? remember? <laughs> you see his face? <laughs> it looks like a, a leaf, a shop like a pepper. Yeah? Especially sharp. And uh, we use that to scare the enemies. Yeah. <laughs> I told you already. Yeah, that's why the French run home. American <laughs> give up. The Chinese also <laughs> leave us alone. Yeah, they're so big and next to us, but they don't swallow us. They try many times, but we give them this kind of 
<laughs> it looks so sweet and green and nice and innocent. You eat it, wow, so sharp. <laughs> so they got all scared. <laughs> we don't need to fight them. <laughs> Just give them food from Vietnam. <laughs> got so scared and run home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Why the, the powerful country like America or France, they give up? Huh? But Vietnam is a beautiful country, no? Yeah. All along, it's just a coast, along the whole line. <laughs> and behind is the big, strong, long mountain. Oh. Mountain, like the backbone, the sea right in front of you. <laughs> oh, just beautiful, huh? Mm. Along the whole country, you know? <laughs> we have many beautiful uh, landscapes, yeah? In the north, I had not a chance to see it. What a pity. I don't think I can go and see ever again now. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if they even let me go there. <laughs> I don't know if I even get a visa to go to Vietnam. You know, I'm a Vietnamese, cannot go home. The price of being famous is is not always good. Even my father, I heard that he was so sick. I want to take him outside, you know, to uh, cure his sickness. Eh? I was uh, very respectful of the law, you know, because my parents go out two times, three times, or two, two, three times. One time to Hong Kong, one, two times to Thailand. And if I really wanted to uh, do something unlawful, I could have done it then. Yeah. I could have kept my parents there. Nobody can do anything. Mm. But I respect the law, okay? They have the visa to come out, and uh, I thought the government is so good enough to give them visa to come out, they should go home in time. Mm. And then we try official way to bring him out, you know, not not to to cheat like that. Oh, I don't. You are too good. <laughs> I'm too good. Yeah, you know, try official way. It don't work. <laughs> okay. Well, at least nobody can say that I am, you know, like unlawful citizen or disrespectful of Vietnamese uh, government uh, regulation. Nothing. See, because they come out, I could keep them. You know. But I don't want uh, to do that. And also, like the tourist guy, bring them out, they have to bring them back in. You see? Yeah. Uh, if I keep them like that, using my power or my position, my money to mm. buy, then the tourist guy may get into trouble mm. also. Ne? Yeah. I'm also a respectful citizen eh, of the world. Eh? We do it, the thing, whatever we can do, we do it lawfully. Now, three times they come out, and I thought, okay, if they're so good to let my parents come out, then. It's okay. I have to also be good to let them go back in. He was so sick. He was so sick. He couldn't even get out of bed. <sighs> I know when he's sick, he's like that. Oh, when I was like 15, he was sick one time like that. I also couldn't get out of the bed. My doctor don't know what, you know, take a long time to, to recognize his sickness. And I had to nurse him one month long. I have to stop my study at that time, yeah, just uh, like junior high, junior high, yeah. So I couldn't take the exam for that year, yeah. I had to take it after, and I passed, okay. <laughs> they let me, believe it or not. <laughs> Normally they don't let you, you know, you have to stay one more year, but I say oh, my situation, really, I didn't mean to, you know, my, my father was sick, yeah? He couldn't go out of the bed, he's in intensive care. I had to be there day and night. You know? But the thing is, mostly people don't let any family go in intensive care, you know, but I was so clean and I was helpful, you know, I cleaned all the pots and pan night pots and cleaned the whole, whole ward. All the patients I take care. I even helped the nurse to do the IV, IV at night. When they are too short of staff or they are sleepy, I said, "Okay, you take care." <laughs> and I was like the doctor at night. <laughs> they show me once, and I know how. I did it before because my pa father asked me to do many times. I did it before. And my uncle and all that, you know, in the hospital, his hospital, his uh, clinic. So I did it in emergency for many shoulders and all that, you know, the mm -hmm. wounded or people who wounded by bomb and all come in. And not enough staff, never enough. And I work in the hospital voluntarily, I learn all that stuff. Mm. So I was like a nurse there, you know, with mm. a license, yeah. <laughs> I was only 15. 
<laughs> and a guy in love with me even at the same time. My first love. <laughs> Do all that and fall in love even my yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Cause his father also lay in the same place and my 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 father, you know, and I so feel sorry for him. Because his father died later on. And that's how we knew each other, you know. I also took care of his father and he was very grateful. But then he died, you know. That that guy, <laughs> the angel, the wow angel, <laughs> call him wow angel, you know, because he looked like an angel, but he he behaved like uh, so grown up already, you know. And the way he talk is very mature, and all that. so I imagine he's a wow, you know. So I, I have wow angel, I call him. <laughs> and that's the name of the, the poem I made for him, but he never know about it. <laughs> Most of the poem I, I I write even to my ex husband I never give him. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so or my ex fiance well, I never give. Nobody know I wrote poetry. <laughs> oh. Mostly I write in Vietnamese also, you know. And I wrote for myself. I never thought that anybody would even <laughs> look at it. You know why? When I was younger. Okay, I wrote the first poem at seven, eh? But of course nobody know about it. I just mm-hmm. memorize it in my heart only, yeah? It's a short poem, you know, it's mm-hmm. like a Japanese style, you know, short, like two, three sentences. Mm-hmm. Or five, four, you know, maximum, a Japanese style, yeah? Mm-hmm. I, at, at that time, I, I loved Japanese style, so mm-hmm. I wrote it almost like Japanese style, you know, short and concentrate. Mm-hmm. You remember the poem about the, the, the New Year's Eve? Yes, okay, that's the, the mm-hmm. first poem I ever made. All by myself. <laughs> Japanese style, even a seven, <laughs> believe it or not. Or eight, eight maximum. Seven. I was seven, yeah. Oh, in Vietnam, eight, you, you are eight then, I think. Yeah, I can't, I don't care. Eight, seven, about, about that time. And then uh, from then on, I, I write it just to keep it to myself, you know. Most people don't even know. Not even my classmates, not even my parents. My parents don't know I made poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody encouraged me so thing and I'm very shy, you know. Yeah. I even want to learn to sing and all that and my parents forbid me, you know, this kind of thing. I don't make money, you know, I nobody <laughs> is a not a very respectable job and so I had to sneakily learn it, you know, play some instrument, yeah? Mm. Alone. So of course that and, and poem also belong to those things, you know. So I never show it. Some of my classmates know a couple of my poem, not all, huh? Later they know, huh? One time they know, and they know more later. But because one time when I was like fourteen or thirteen, fourteen, and I made a poetry, a poem, you know, when I was uh, in junior uh, high school, but lower high school, I made a, a poem at that time. And uh, and luckily I I left it on the table somewhere because I lived with the other cousins at that time. The house is many people, uh, four, five, six people together. We live uh, in Cap San Jack, Vung Tao. And then what happened? Okay, I left it and carelessly I left it somewhere. And then my cousin, the big, strong, powerful guy, <laughs> who who has authority in his hand and. He's uh, the big guy, you know, because he earned big money. He's an engineer and he worked for the Americans and, you know, wow, you know, he's a big shot. <laughs> so whatever his words carry weight, you know, and I'm only 13 <laughs> or 14 the most, you know. Uh, it's very confusing for me, 13, 14, between that time. Yeah. And I left it, uh, the poem, uh, somewhere. I, I forgot that poem, yeah. And then I left it and then he, he read it. And he make the whole house listen to it and make fun oh. of me and make fool of me. So from then on, oh. that's it. The whole world just stay away from me. I don't want to talk about it. You know, I was so embarrassed. Do you understand me? So embarrassed. He probably doesn't uh, like poetry, you know. He's an engineer, you know. <laughs> he worked for, with soy, with bricks, with bricks. He, he make bricks, you know, bricks. He make dam for water, for electricity, but he know nothing about poetry, I guess. Not, he's all math, you know, math and macho. <laughs> oh God! And from then on, oh, I got my poem like, like a uh, life and death, you know. I don't ever sit anywhere that people go near to write. I go sit alone somewhere in bathroom or somewhere <laughs> toilet wherever when I want to write, 
and then I fold it, put it in somewhere and seal it. Or lock it somewhere, you know, put under a pillow, inside pillow, <laughs> under bed, wherever, yeah? Because when you're young, you don't have privacy, you know? Yeah. You have to sleep sometimes with your cousins, and you never know what they, they think. Yeah. And I, I cannot have, I want to write poetry. Mm. That's the only thing I have. I hardly have many friends, you understand? The friends, they talk about things that I don't understand. Mm. You know, uh, like they were young, but they talk about boyfriend already, you know, and how big your boobs have to be. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> is it true like that? <laughs> Otherwise, you're not a, a beautiful girl. Yeah, yeah. And I look at my boob, I say, okay, I'm not that. <laughs> you go home, look at yourself in the mirror, and you say, oh my God, okay, who am I then? Huh? <laughs> I'm not a girl, I'm not even a boy, so what am I? Oh, never mind. I have poetry, you know, thing like that, you know? And I was kind of shy and uh, preserved a little bit, you know, more for... And they were all outgoing and talking about boyfriend and uh, how it feels like, blah, 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 even, you know? <laughs> and I can only imagine and go home look at the mirror of myself, you know. And I shake my head and say, okay, never mind. <laughs> but I was good in the class at least, yes. and they were not. Yes. So for that reason. And then sometimes I ask my other cous cousin, you know, older one who already had boyfriend and know a lot of stuff. And uh, we just talk, talk, and, uh, and I say, oh, all the girls in my class, they know all this kind of thing, you know. and. Uh, I don't know anything, and they say, oh, I think you, I don't think I'm that beautiful because they all are so beautiful, big boobs and all that, <laughs> and they already have boyfriend, you know. <laughs> so, and my cousin, cousin, told me she's so kind. She said, No, you are mistaken. The most beautiful girl in the school I saw is only you. <laughs> and I, I say, oh, you are my cousin, of course, you know, bigger sister, you know, cousin, but older, yeah. older sister. There are two kind of cousin. Older sister, you call it older sister or older brother, yeah. and the younger, you call younger, you know, just like your younger brother or younger sister. Yeah. So she's older type. She's uh, mm. uh, from from my father's sister, you know, yes. older sister. So she is my older sister, yeah. no matter how old she is, but she's older anyway, and she's kind, and she's good. She say, are you kidding? <laughs> you are the most beautiful girl in the whole school. That's all I see, you know? And I don't know if she meant it or not, but I didn't believe it either. <laughs> I didn't care, you know? And they always make fun of me somehow, you know? Uh, sometimes they say, what? Fat and short? Sometimes short and fat, I say, what's the difference? <laughs> I say, what's the difference? Either short and fat or fat and short? <laughs> it's the same, isn't it? I don't know, people make fun of me most of the time, a lot of time, you know, when in, in the younger time, yeah? But after that, after that uh, junior, I go up, uh, junior, junior, but junior high. You know, there are two kinds. Junior is a lower, and then a junior, and then another senior. Huh? Uh, from the junior higher, you know, I, I begin to, 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 my luck begin to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, not, not all the people make fun, but all the, the people who, who, who don't make fun of you, they are your friend and just a normal friend. I don't really have a close friend, yeah? But, uh, but most of the people are okay. Just, one or two, the bully, you know, they pick on you and they are the one who hurt you the most, even they're just one or two or three, mm -hmm. yeah? Even the whole school like you, it, yeah. it couldn't even make up for that. They make you, you feel so bad, yeah? And uh, because all the teacher likes me, you know? Mm -hmm. So these people, they're even more jealous and they make me feel hell, but just in, in one or two classes of, uh, and when I was younger, you know, in the primary school. And in the, that school, it's just uh, some of these girls, you know? Uh, they don't really bully me, they just, you know, talk like that and make, make me feel like I'm nobody, you know? <laughs> because they talk, they know so much about boys and stuff and how to do this and how to do that, and I listen like Greeks, you know? <laughs> I only learn English, I didn't learn Greeks. <laughs> to them it's so natural, you know, they understood each other, and I feel like an outsider, you know? All I had is my experienced cousin. <laughs> but she don't tell much, you know. She also go into tough time at that time with her boyfriend, <laughs> because she always picked the most handsome boy in town, and she is not always the most handsome girl, you know. I have to be honest. 
but she thinks I'm the most handsome. Oh, that's very kind of her. And then she always have trouble, you know, <laughs> because the guys is always good looking, you know, and very elegant and all that. And of course, the the last probably uh, probably he loves her, but I don't know her. her she doesn't feel matching or something, and then something go wrong, and then uh, always something. <laughs> so I, I don't think it's any good for me to listen to her. I have to always comfort her anyway, you know. <laughs> Never mind, you find another guy, he's nobody anyway. He don't even look that good. I wouldn't take him if I were you, you know, things like that. So what was the huge <laughs> experience, a girl always suffering, so I don't... <laughs> I cannot listen to my classmate because I don't understand. Uh, because they're both too much like they they know a lot of boys, you know, like one have a couple of boyfriends or something like that. And she is a suffering one. I have boyfriend but suffering. So I, I'm just like in a between I can't listen to nobody. So I do it just I go into myself, you know, and write poetry. That's why I'm very lonely, you know. Lonely <laughs> poet poem was my, my, my friend, my true friend. Girl never talked to me anything. I write what he just say what you know. <laughs> yeah, I I lost one book of poetry. I am trying to find it back, but you know all the poetry you have is not all I had. Eh? I had more than that, but I lost one in high school. I'm trying to you know asking people see if anybody see it somewhere. <laughs> it's not too big, but uh, oh. It's Maybe how many? About oh, forty poems at least. Oh. Yeah. And I lost one recently also. I found it and then I lost it again. So moving too much from cave to mountain <laughs> mountain to, to the sea. Lost everywhere, everything. Oh dear, I was very hurt because I lost it. I lost that one poem. And I still have some more, you know. We were digging it out and try to <laughs> Retype it, rewritten it so people can, can type it because my writing is bad, you know. Nobody can read it. Not even myself. Somebody said, what, what was that? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I have to read the whole fra- fra- paragraph in order to guess what was it. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I got it. I remember now. Okay, fine. That's the only word that makes sense, so it cannot be something else. No, about the school, hey? Yeah. Yes. That I had to drop out of the school because my parents were sick. Oh, because of my father, and then we talk about that, yeah. So I couldn't even see my father when he died, you know? And that was very really painful for me. I don't care how enlightened you are. If your father died, yeah. your father died, yeah? And the human emotion within you also make you feel just like everybody else, very painful. Even on one hand, you know, okay, it's good for him to go. On the other hand, you know, the human emotion also make you feel like you should have seen him one time at least to say to him that you love him, yeah, and that he's going to be fine. Because he died, it was very painful for him, you know. He he was hoping that that he can come to see me in America or somewhere. At that moment, he began to get worse. His sickness just took a worse turn and then he could not even move anymore and he couldn't even talk and then he could not even understand anybody else remember anybody anymore. He just plunged out like that and then died in such a state, you know? I, that's just very painful. When you were young, you don't know how to really love your parents, you know? You're busy studying and you have friends or you go out and all kind of thing and they're always too busy to uh, to forbid you do this, do that, you understand? And then 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 you, you have to go out of the house, you go somewhere alone, you study, and then you don't have always chance to say you love your parents, yeah? And so when they die, it's just in such a state, if they die normal, you can come and say hello, it's different, you know, but when you cannot, you know, it's, it's some bureaucracy and there's some so, so very strange uh, philosophy of the world, you know, they stop you, even can stop love, you know, this is a very strange thing. And it's, it, it hurts, you understand? Because then you imagine how many people suffer like that, or even worse than me. You know what I mean? In family, uh, love, affair, uh, love, and uh, it, it hurt more, you know, because I'm sensitive, not only for me, but from then I, I, I think of everybody else and 
It really hurts so much. It hurt me so long. I still feel pain sometimes when I think about that. It's not like I don't have emotion. Now I don't have to cry anymore, but I did cry a lot. Crying does help you, though. It helps to clean a little bit of your emotion. Of course, I, I know he's happy, you know, now. But before he died, you know, he wasn't happy. He was very sad, very like a hopeless, you know what I mean? Like terminated all the hope to see me. Because he really loves me a lot. I know because every time if I am wounded or injured by something, oh, he was screaming so much, screaming at me. But I know because he loved me and he panicked, you understand? If you don't care about somebody, you wouldn't be screaming like that. Yeah? Yeah. He was very panicked. Father never show emotion like mother, you know, but I know he loves me very much. Uh, of course now he's happy in heaven and of course I'm happy for him, of course. But as a human, as a daughter, you know, I would have liked to pay uh, my last homage to my father, you know, before he died. Just the worries like that and I guess I'm not the only one. I guess some people go through worse situations than me and I'm very sorry this world sometimes like hell. If people don't believe in hell, they should look around, you know. The way human treat human, they, they cannot be heaven. Even now, 21st century already, and still killing each other like animals. And animals, they don't just kill like that, they don't kill mass like that, you know? They may be fighting with each other, and by the way, one die, you know? Maybe because of food, maybe because of uh, mates, you know, but they have some solid reason, and they're just animal instinct, you know? But we are human, we have reason, we, we have intelligence. I don't know how, at this time of the planet, people still can take a gun and shoot somebody else, right? Die in front of your eyes, take the life out of him. And he's not even your enemy, you don't even know the guy. He did never do anything wrong to you personally. How you do that? Do you understand me? If in anger or something, maybe you fight each other, maybe understand that, but just, but some just blindly just shoot each other, just because it's a job, because he's a soldier, you know, he just blind just to shoot somebody, just like that. Maybe he worked for the enemy government, maybe, but that guy never done anything to you, right? And he also has family, he has father, mother, he has kids, he had loved ones, he has emotion just like you. How you just take a life out of him like that? You know, I, I never understand human up to now. I never understand. And we call that civilization. Yeah? And we call, for example, the African backwood <laughs> or some tribal people are uncivilized. Yeah? What the civilization for so that you can... Uh, I invent some killing agent, you know, and mass destruction weapon. There's no civilization to me. That is truly barbarous in every sense of it. It's terrible. It's hell. Yeah? I don't understand human ever. I love human, I just don't understand it. I don't understand how, how this thing can work. But, okay, there you are. Uh, I guess just karma, you know? Hmm? Pay and take, ne? give and take, pay and borrow all the time. And if you don't forgive your enemy, then he come back again and make you pay again. And then you come back, make him pay, and then he come back, make you pay, blah, 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 and involve more and more people. And never finish. Yeah. Okay, you know already, forgiveness is the only thing that we should do. But I wish the whole world understand what I'm saying. I wish the powerful people understand really what forgiveness means. It seems like they associate forgiveness with weakness. Yeah, It doesn't have to be, you know? A strong man is not the one who can punch somebody, but the strong man is somebody who has the muscle but don't punch. Yeah the plastic bag, because it's produced by some of the poorer country, you know? Mm -hmm. Some people have to work in such an industry, yeah? And I saw it sometime, long, long time, many years ago on TV, that people who work in the plastic industry, you know, very sick. 
because of the smoke that come out of that city, mm-hmm. and the whole city was like enveloped in cloud, you know, in smoke. It really looks so dark. And also, their respiratory, they have a respiratory problem, mm-hmm. and the children are already affected. You know, it's very terrible to work in such a plastic industry. You understand? That's why I told you I don't like plastic bags too much. So. If we have to use it, we use it, but try to economize anything you can, anything at all. Even white paper, everything is made from something. And people have to suffer for it. Yeah? They work low wages, uh, work long hours, support the family because that's the only job they can have. Yeah? Some people have no choice. They really have no choice. So it's not like when I remonstrate you about wasting something because I worry with my money. It's not that. <laughs> the least thing I worry about is money, you understand? Because we have money, yeah? If we don't have, I can make it. It's not about money, you understand? It's uh, the, for the ecology of the whole world, yeah? That we have to really take care of the planet, yeah? In a very any small way we can, because everybody take care of a small way, then, then it's big, yeah? Because um, if we uh, uh, deplete the, the, the resource of the planet, for example, cut too many trees to make paper or to burn or to build houses or things like that, you know, then uh, the planet, uh, 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 climate will change, yeah? It's already global warming and they research, they say it's because of us, yeah? So it's not just about money, huh? It's for everybody, yeah? for the future of our children and grandchildren and further on, further on. We want to last long. And not to talk about so many things we, we do, you know. We use the resource of the planet, you know, to make gun, to make suffering, you know, this is not right. Not just the resource only, it's the manpower. Concentrate on that, yeah? Of course some people have job because of that, but in the long run it's a killer. The, the, the killing karma will rub off on everybody who is involved in, in, in weapons, yeah, of any kind. And if we use all that resource, all that money, the world, the whole world will never go hungry, nobody. No children ever have to go hungry. So you understand when I say something, economize, yeah? Try to reuse it again and again or that. Not because I am strict on you or anything. It's, it's, it goes far beyond that, far beyond our relationship. It's something bigger than me and you. Understand that? Yes. I hardly told you about this thing, but uh, it's everywhere. Eh? Everybody has to, to try to save whatever you can. Yeah? So now you understand, I say I don't like plastic bags. Just remind me of two months of suffering, the people who make it. Yeah? In some of the supermarkets, they ask you if you want paper bag or, or plastic bag, I guess because of environmentally conscious. No wonder they predicted that the 2000, the world come to an end, you know? By the look of how we waste the planet resources and we pollute the air and all that, they could have, you know, <laughs> not to talk about karmic or anything. It's just like your car or your body, if you overuse it, it's, it's going to kaput, no? Mm-hmm. And to ruin. Uh, I watched the other day on BBC something, I say that about global warming, it's very scary, very scary. Really, if it continue that way, I don't know. We could die with many different things. It doesn't have to be <laughs> atom bomb. <laughs> doesn't have to be bomb. You know, natural gases from the ocean. If if it's all come up, it's, it's enough to kill us. No need atom bomb anything. Or the global warming. You know, flood. Yeah. From the ice, from the uh, from the pole, yeah. or, or you know, overheated or something, yeah, and we die from heat or from the gas because of the heat. The heat you make the gas come out from the ocean. 
um, anything, you know, like the forest and the no more air. The forest all burn off and or we use it all up and no more air, no more good air. Yeah? Just and then always uh, carbon dioxide from the from the cars or from the airplane or from whatever, yeah? And all the toxin from the industry, you know, producing this, producing that and all the bomb and all the thing all together. And earthquake even, you know, they affect each other, they affect the volcano, the volcano affect oh, all kind of stuff. And all of that because we are overdoing our development without without we really, uh, really consider how to to balance, you know, the development and the environment. But I think uh, they are beginning to worry now, and even America is considering importing uh, methanol. Is that what it is? Or ethanol from Brazil? What is that the color again? I forgot. I know it. Just ethanol, no? Ethanol? Yeah. They made it from sugar cane. Um, what is it? Um, Nobody knows. I think ethanol. I forgot the name. Yeah. Or some uh, natural energy, you know? Some uh, how is hydrogen or something to run the car. Yeah. And gas instead of uh, of, of, of gasoline, like right now. So reduce some of the, the emission, you know, from the in reduce some of the to toxin from from the exhaust pipe, exhaust film of the cars and other machinery, and even airplane. They do the research. They say that only one day. For three days, the, the, the airplane doesn't fly in New York. The sky is so clear as it has never been for many, many years. Yes, first time ever. And something else, you know, more positive. The sky was so blue. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, because so we don't even need to die from a thumb bomb. Huh? Even the, the sun begins to get cooler, dimmer, you know, because of all this. Uh, how you say uh, smoke coming from the industry and cars that cover the the atmosphere and reflects the warmth, the heat back into the the space. Yeah, that's why we have global warming, but few cold. <laughs> Isn't that paradoxical? Yeah, and and if you stop one, the other get worse. That's the thing also. <laughs> And then now they it just get like in, in, in inside a maze, you know. It's so scary when you listen to all that research. That that is not barking. You know? That's crying. <laughs> Moaning, you know? No oh. What kind of dog? I never see any dog do this. Do you have any dog who do this? Did boy or lady ever do that kind of thing? No, huh? No. No, huh? No. They, they, you know, like they, uh, they howl at the moon, that kind, you know. <laughs> and I'm the moon, you know. So. <laughs> Too dog and Zolo, he learns so quick. He's afraid of Goody, you know. So Goody does what he does what, so it's good, you know. <laughs> French. Yeah, he he never did that, right? No, no. He don't show this kind of emotion. He only bark or he only bites, but he don't. Oh. <laughs> you incredible dogs or something, huh? Or something. Happy also does that sometimes with Goody. Yeah. And they both will make like an opera. <laughs> and now because Zolo does it, she takes a rest. <laughs> Vacation. 
they really do a lot of lonely, you know, so they want to support vocally. <laughs> Can you imagine that? So incredible, no? <laughs> Just a stupid, they call it stupid, like a potato. <laughs> you know, when, when, when you call somebody insignificant and nobody is, oh, he's just a potato. You know what I mean? But the potato is not nothing. Look at, he, he just got a, a handful of earth and he know how to get the sweetness out of the earth and so sweet like that. And you thought it's even a cake. It's a naturally God make cake. <laughs> God made this cake for us, huh? Yeah. And the color is so deep. Look at that. Không có đèn hả? Có thể làm sáng lên không? Huh? Look, deep purple. I couldn't even paint this color, <laughs> even if I tried. Where does he get all this color? Even not to talk about. <laughs> The sugar that he absorbed, eh? Yes. So sweet. And the color he got. And outside it's just gray. Like a potato. Inside it's so dark and deep purple. We call it purple yam. It's, it's very special, huh? So sweet. The normal yam already sweet. This one is so special. You know, if, if you have barbecue in the, in the winter, huh? And put this in, throw it in the fire, and then after take it out hot, and you blow in and eat it at the same time. Wow, it's delicious. No need sugar or anything. So sweet like that. And it's just right sweet. Not too sweet, not less sweet. Yeah, yeah. How does he know how? And he don't even have any computer to calculate how much sugar it takes. <laughs> and we say we are smart. Eh? And look down for the potato. Say, oh, he's just a potato. A small potato even. This small potato is so smart, I tell you. I don't know any scientist, a scientist can, 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 I can invent a machine. Yeah? who know exactly the amount of sugar it takes. And it takes sugar from nowhere, yeah? From the earth, you know? Or maybe a little fertilizer, but the fertilizer is not sweet, I tell you. <laughs> if you ever try to taste it, it's not sweet at all. I can guarantee, yeah? I'm sure it's not. Even I didn't taste, I would know it's not. Yeah, so where does he take the sweetness? You understand me? So smart. Hmm? And just enough, and then just a little layer cover outside. And inside is pure sweetness and, and beautiful and just the right texture, you know? Not wet and not dry, huh? You can't even bake a cake better than this if you want to bake a potato cake like this. I don't know how, with all the technique that you have. And there's no computer chips in here or nothing. <laughs> it's incredible, huh? He has no machine. You see this? All pure transparent. There's nothing hidden at all. And he's so beautiful, perfect. This is perfection. Mm. Uh, you have to really appreciate, you know, the creation of God, eh? of the God. Small God and big God, they really make things so nice. Mm. Yeah, just from the earth, eh? And a couple of, uh, a handful of maybe, a spoon of, of, of fertilizer. Yeah. Suppose I, I bury you in the ground <laughs> and throw you a few. Even a bucket of fertilizer <laughs> after a few weeks. I did you out. Would you be sweet like this? Huh? And you are so smart already, you even call him a small potato. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could you be sweet like that? Maybe we could try, you know? <laughs> Some bitter guy there. Some bad guy will bury him and throw a few buckets <laughs> of fertilizer. See how sweet he will become. Yeah? Maybe it worked, Pat. Huh? Maybe it worked. Maybe we don't need to uh, to correct him or clean his karma or anything. Just <laughs> <laughs> just put him, bury him in the earth and throw a few buckets of fertilizer, right? The best quality, even. Yeah. We 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 can make sure we can ask the farmer which fertilizer he used <laughs> to make sure that we get the right one. And then how deep you should bury? <laughs> how many days? How many weeks? Yeah. How much water per day? Yeah. And what kind of water, you know? We just have to make sure that, that no fail, no, nothing become our fault or anything. No excuses not to become a sweet potato. Yeah, and then all my disciples will be so sweet and perfect like this. When we don't need nothing else. Oh my God. Talking about nature is so clever, eh? What need? No chip, no computer, nothing at all. Huh? No manipulation, nothing. This is always like this, you know? 
It's not just now because we have a technique. No, it has always been like this. Just like rice has always been like that. You know? I mean, like the fragrant rice from Vietnam or Thailand, they have always been like that since times immemorial. <laughs> and the, the, like the mango has always been, always been like that from our countries. You know? The, the potato, like this is not a new invention, huh? We have this all the time, eh? Just like we have a purple rice also, you know? Yeah. And this is a pur purple potato, too much, yeah? So, <laughs> if you eat this purple potato today, next week you must eat purple rice. <laughs> it's a fashion. <laughs> yeah? No, I'm kidding, you believe anything. So whatever joke I, I told, I don't remember at all. Because they never give me any tape. And they, they even tease me on a news magazine when I read the news magazine. They say, tape number so-and-so <laughs> from Florida or from Hawaii, what year so-and-so. I can't even remember it. I don't have any tape with me, you know. The whole world knows about me. About me, I don't know anything. And so every time I, I see some tape, you know, by chance or for working or something, Oh, it's like new, like somebody else talking, and I also listen. And say, wow, that's very nice, <laughs> and I laugh at it, or you know, or happy with it. Just like the joke, you know. I, now and again, they, 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 you know, like both here, they give charity a few jokes on the magazine for me to read. Otherwise, I don't even know. I told such a joke, I forgot. So I just read some joke before, you know. It was very funny, huh? Remember the joke I told you the other day? That's from the news magazine, our magazine, and this is for my tape. Which I don't remember at all. So I laugh like new, you know. And if if they don't say spoken by the supreme master Ching Hai, so I wouldn't know it was me who talk. <laughs> I would not remember. I don't talk again because they all know already. But it was so funny. And the other joke ah about Moses, yeah, uh, the the in the mental institution, uh, two patient, two mental nutcase talk to each other. The one said to the other, you know what? The other side say, what? Well, you know, I'm Moses. And the other side say, oh, garbage, how you know about that? <laughs> say, well, God told me so. And after a long while, the next cell, you know, the voice coming over, say, no, I didn't. <laughs> I did not tell you. <laughs> I did not tell him. <laughs> I didn't know I told that joke either. I didn't. <laughs> if they don't say the Supreme Master's here, I said, I didn't tell the joke. No, I didn't. <laughs> and it's similar to that joke I just remember now. I also told it already, but I don't know if they have it on or not. It was a thief, you know, broke into a house and began to move television, <laughs> you know, computer and camera and whatnot. And suddenly he heard the, the voice from the dark, you know? I say, Hey, you, be careful. Jesus is watching you. Oh. Yeah. So the thief turned around and don't see anybody. And then he began to move things again. <laughs> and he heard a voice again. Hey, you, watch it. Jesus is watching you. <laughs> and he turned around again looking. Ah, he saw a parrot. Yeah? Like suddenly. <laughs> so I said, hey, oh, who are you anyway? So the parrot said, I'm Moses. <laughs> and the thief laughed and said, oh, what kind of people, what kind of idiot who named a parrot Moses? So the, the parrot said, the same idiot who named a Rottweiler Jesus. <laughs> You understand? Yeah, yeah. Jesus watching you. <laughs> the same idiot who named a Rottweiler Jesus. <laughs> yeah, now and again I, I I remember this joke because I wrote it. I type it on the magazine. Only now and again, you know, not every time we have a joke in the magazine. And it say, please refer to so and so tape. I don't have any to refer to. <laughs> I run around so much, you know. I couldn't even take myself with me, <laughs> not to talk about. Yeah, I could hardly take myself with me already. Sometimes, not to talk or take any tapes. And sometimes, sometimes, 
I met some Vietnamese long time ago, you know, those journalists or something, you know. When when I was um, working to try to, to save the refugees, you know, the one they, they killed themselves and all that. It was a tragic time. So I go and I try to help them somehow, you know, what I can. And then most, of course, the journalists and all that, they always also know about it, and then they also come and and talk to me and all that, and and sometimes they say to me, "Thank you for sending me the news magazine every every month." I say, "Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Which magazine?" They say, "Your magazine. You send it to me every month." I say, "I send you." <laughs> I don't even have one myself. <laughs> oh, I send you. <laughs> you know the the headquarter. They send it to them or whatever. I don't even know. And they think I'm sending it to advertise for myself, you know. Often it's very funny, you know. Or sometimes they thank me for the book, you know, Immediate Enlightenment Number One. <laughs> Can you send me another number two, please? <laughs> I say even number zero I don't have. <laughs> People imagine so cute thing, you know, lovely. They're so lovely. They think I'm there and dictate everything and do everything all by myself. I must have no a thousand hands and thousand eyes and thousand computers at the same time, you know? No wonder they, they, they draw the the Yin Bodhisattva picture with a thousand arms and thousand eyes and thousand ears, maybe. <laughs> That's the way they, they imagine. Oh, Kwan Yin Bodhisattva must have complained and say, look, do I have thousand arms? <laughs> and then they did try it out. <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. They imagine all kind of things. They imagine I do all this, you know? And sometimes they say, thank you for sending me the email, this and that. I say, I don't know how to use computer even. I don't even know how to use a mouse. <laughs> People imagine so much, you know? They think I do all that kind of thing. Just the way they do it outside, you know? I'm not doing any of that. It's that. so funny. I only do things like charity and all that stuff, you know, and about who sending to whom. It's, it's not always I do that, you know. Unless I send some letter to somebody, it's different, but I don't send these advertisement stuff <laughs> to anybody. Sometimes I don't know when the magazine, no, what number yet, you know. That's the trouble. I guess that's why Peter. Uh, that's why people try to invent robots, you know, <laughs> make look like them, and they go out, blah 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 blah, and then they can sleep for five minutes <laughs> or hide somewhere and take a shower without the camera running into the bathroom. Okay, yeah, talking about uh, running into bathroom, really. You know, remember when we were in uh, in 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 France somewhere? We lived together in the same floor, and he really he ran into the bathroom and took my picture. One of my pictures have a, a bath curtain hang behind us <laughs> because I wasn't I wasn't taking a shower or anything. I just go in there to get something, and he knew that it's not like he sneaked something, but it's true. He's it in the bathroom, <laughs> so I just told him, "Hey, get away!" And then that's the picture come like that. It looked like that. So that's why it looks so lively, like I'm talking with my eyes. It's truly like that. <laughs> yeah, that's why the picture they like it because it looks really like natural, you know. <laughs>